Last night, Oakland A's pitcher Chris Bassett was struck in the head by a line drive, and in this video, we're going to break down the medical side of what happened. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Let's get right into what happened. You all know what to do if you enjoy these videos and want to help support the channel. So this morning, we got some encouraging updates about Bassett's condition. Essentially, he suffered a fracture to the cheekbone and the maxilla. Surgery is going to be delayed for a few days while swelling subsides, but otherwise his scans were clean. His vision checked out okay. So let's break down that anatomy and what happened here. So this line drive comes back and appears to hit Bassett pretty much square on the right side of the head right there. We can see as this ball comes back here towards the mound that it essentially hits Bassett pretty square in the side of the face. He tries to get his glove up there, but just isn't able to in time. And the ball strikes him in that right portion of the face, kind of near the eye right actually at the spot where, of course, we found out the fracture was. When the medical staff gets out there, they're first going to be looking for, number one, is he conscious? Because as we've seen with other players getting struck in the head like this, you can suffer a very bad brain injury and can have things like seizures and be unconscious. And so first off, get out there. Just is he alert? Is he conscious? Is there anything grossly wrong from a neurologic perspective? Now, at that same time, of course, they're going to be able to tell if there's bleeding. It looked like there was some blood on the towel after this. And you'll right away be able to look and see if there's some big obvious eye injury or some big severe open fracture. Once I'm able to grossly check kind of neurologic status, make sure they're not seizing or unconscious, I'm going to make sure that the eye isn't severely injured. Dealing with something like an open globe is going to be different from just a fracture of the cheekbone. So trying to wipe the blood out of the way, looking at the eyeball, checking that gross neurofunction, and then you're gonna be able to step through and say, okay, where's that laceration? Where's the pain? Do we have to worry about things like a fracture? Beyond trying to stop some of the bleeding, there's not much you're gonna do for this on the field at that point, and so it's a question of getting them safely off the field to where they can be properly evaluated for things like a fracture. So we heard from the report that he had a fracture of his cheekbone or the upper jawbone or maxilla. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, this little prominence that we see on the side of the face, that's going to be what we consider our cheekbone. But there's not just a single bone that is the cheekbone, it's sort of where multiple bones meet up to form that prominence. This green bone that I have highlighted though is the maxilla. It's the upper portion of the jaw. The lower portion of the jaw is the mandible, and the mandible is what actually moves up and down when we talk, when we eat, and so forth. But the maxilla, the part that Bassett broke, is sort of fixed and fused with the top portion of the skull. The maxilla joins up with a bone called the zygomatic bone that I'll highlight in pink here. And this is really what we think of when we're feeling and pushing on the cheekbone. It's this zygomatic process or this zygomatico-maxillary confluence where those two bones come together. There's a little bit of contribution here from the temporal bone in the back, but this area is what we think of as the cheekbone. As you can see, part of that maxilla forms the orbital socket. And so when we see a maxilla fracture, we could technically have some of the orbit involved depending on where that fracture is. And so it's not just a matter of where this bone is broken, it's how the bone being broken can affect those other nearby structures like the eye. That maxilla forms the floor of the orbital socket. And so part of their evaluation is going to be whether or not any of those muscles that control his eye movements are trapped or pinched because of where the fracture could be to that maxilla. Now you always see people concerned when someone gets hit on the side of the face or near the temple. One of the big reasons for that is because of a blood vessel called the middle meningeal artery that runs behind the bones near the temple that if ruptured or torn can cause more of a severe, bleeding injury inside the head. This green artery that I have highlighted is the external carotid artery. Arteries are delivering blood from the heart up to the brain and to the muscles around the skull and the face. You can see how this external carotid artery branches off to give all of these other arteries that are going to go out to feed tissue around the skull, deep inside the brain, around the front of the face, and so forth. But deep inside of here is one of the little branches called the middle meningeal artery. That little guy is highlighted in blue here, but you can see how, number one, small it is back up here, but number two, how it dives up behind the skull. I've hidden the other side of the skull here so that we can dive kind of deep inside, and sure enough, we can see where that little middle meningeal artery is popping through inside the skull right down here. Of course, our brain is sitting in the skull there, and so if this middle meningeal artery gets damaged from something like a skull fracture or an impact to the side of the head, you can have blood accumulate and cause an epidural hematoma or bleeding around the brain. This is a very serious injury that sometimes requires emergent surgery, and so that's part of why we always get concerned when we see an impact to the temple or to the side of the head. Now they're waiting for surgery because you want that swelling to calm down because if you go in there to try to correct this and do surgery and there's a bunch of fluid, there's a bunch of inflammation and swelling, it can make the surgery more difficult and it's harder to visualize all the anatomy. So similar thing they do with like a broken nose. You wait a little bit for that swelling to go down because 
With all that swelling in the way, it makes the surgery more difficult. There are some nerves that are right around this area that control sensation to the face and some of the muscle actions of the face. And so those are little things that we'll have to worry about kind of post-operative as complications. But it's really reassuring to hear that there is no bleeding in the brain. He didn't have any other significant injuries to the eye and his vision is not affected. So great work by the White Sox and the A's medical staffs, getting out there, evaluating him, making sure he's safe getting off the field and then getting him the prompt attention that he needs to get this treated. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.